Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Donald Trump's rally, the relatively impromptu rally in deep blue South Bronx, which voted for Joe Biden overwhelmingly in the 2020 election, it drew a crowd of 8,000 to 10,000 people, and it was a resounding success. Now, only 3,500 people were allowed into the grounds where the rally was. Of course, they're going to like take these, you know, aerial shots of like towards the end of the rally or like before anybody's there and try to say it wasn't full. But at its peak, it was full. They fit 3,500 people there, and there were about eight to 10,000 people who came by. And the most important takeaway from this is a lot of these people were not necessarily coming from Staten Island or, uh, you know, people that follow Trump around everywhere. A lot of these people were New Yorkers. They were from the Bronx. Reporters on the ground, even CNN was going out there and they were saying, you know, you, you would have expected a big crowd regardless because it is Donald Trump, but there weren't a lot of protesters, which you would have seen that back in 2016. Not now. The uh, Trump hatred energy is just not where it was even where it was in 2020, and Donald Trump is going to do rallies in these places that are, you know, I guess you would say very, very blue, like 10% white. And yes, yeah, crowd is going to be whiter, of course, we know that, but there were a lot of people there. It was a very diverse crowd for a Donald Trump rally, and you had a lot of people there from the Bronx and from Brooklyn and from Manhattan and Queens and just New York City in general. Now, does that mean Donald Trump's going to go out there and win the state of New York? Probably not. But is he going to improve in New York City? Yeah. And this, again, was a rally that he did that mainly was to gain attention you know, nationally. That's why he did it. He's stuck in New York. Why not try to rally there? Why not drum up a crowd there? We'll see what happens in terms of the election, but, you know, the popular vote victory, he would love to have that. Down ballot effects, you talk about this in general, just going to the South Bronx, showing that he cares about people in these areas, kind of like a 50-state strategy. We're still, you know, five months away from the election, a little bit more than that. He's testing the waters. No, he's not going to probably win New York State, but if it gets closer, that's a big, big statement, and New York City is moving to the right. It moved to the right in 2020. It moved to the right in 2022, and I believe it very well could do so again in 2024, especially at the presidential level. And being able to draw a crowd like this in New York City just kind of shows how a lot of people are fed up and angry about what is going on. A lot of people there said they would never have voted for a Republican before, or they've only voted Democrat, but they'd never vote for a Democrat again. That's a good sign for Donald Trump. He's expanding the coalition, but also he's uniting the party, which is also very important and crucial because Democrats love nothing more than a Republican Party that is divided. And that's true. And there's many factions. And yes, some of those factions are not in lockstep with Donald Trump's agenda. And I think that they need to have a lesser presence in his second term, if he gets one, hopefully he does, than they had in his first term, where the MAGA was kind of, I guess you would say, it was maybe around a little bit, but it was mainly shelved for a lot of these Bush administration type of, you know, people that worked in past administrations for more establishment Republican presidents or people who would have served in a Romney cabinet if Romney was able to cross the finish line in 2012, which he was not, obviously. But still, Donald Trump, you have to kind of make this, uh, I guess you would say, this olive branch to some of these people, even if it means that you keep them at an arm's length just so you know, it shows that these people aren't defecting to Biden. Nikki Haley endorsing Trump. I said, I don't like Nikki Haley or value anything she has to say, but it's a good thing she's endorsing Trump because Biden would have loved nothing more than to try to claim control over a, a certain portion of the Republican primary electorate, which, I mean, to be fair, he's going to get anyways because a lot of those people were crossover voters, never supported Donald Trump. In fact, a CNN poll came out and showed, or was CNN covering a different pollster, that Donald Trump is actually doing better with Haley voters than he did in 2020, those same voters. Biden actually won them, and then Trump is leading with them, 
even though it's not by a lot. So it just kind of shows that those independents, that's kind of what it comes down to, the independents that may have said, I don't know if I could stomach Trump, I'll vote for Haley in this primary, though, because they don't like Biden. Well, maybe those are the voters that he's he's might be able to get. And just extending the olive branch rhetorically, it's an empty gesture. He doesn't have to make Haley VP. He said he wouldn't make Haley VP. But just saying, you know, she'll be on our team. I think she's going to be on our team because we have a lot of the same ideas, same thoughts. Trump said the same thing about, you know, Bernie Sanders in 2016. This is what people don't understand. So many people are like, well, why is he saying this positive thing? It's politics. Trump understands it. It's business. I think it's a good thing. You know, he said, we, we agree with Bernie on a lot. We agree on trade. We, we oppose Obamacare, even if Bernie was like to the left of Hillary on Obamacare. But either way you look at it, it shows that he was willing to, to compromise with those people who may have, you know, supported somebody else in a primary, but get them on board. And he's basically saying, yeah, we have a lot of the same ideas. You know, she doesn't like Biden. She wants a stronger border or whatever, which technically... We know that Haley basically wants open borders, but her rhetoric, you know, that's the the main takeaway here. And Trump is basically saying, we're going to unite the party. It doesn't mean he's going to give Haley a spot in his administration. Doesn't mean that she's going to be a lead campaign surrogate. I don't. Even, I mean, maybe she'll speak at the RNC because that like is commonplace for a, a candidate to do. But you talk about uniting the party. I mean, this is a good thing he's doing. He's uniting the party, but also expanding the coalition. That's you know a double-edged sword for Donald Trump at this stage in the game. You want to close out. You want to go out there and win down the stretch. That also means that you need to be raising money and raising money more effectively and spending more effectively than Biden down the stretch, which apparently it seems like in the last month he did, and this month he might be doing it as well. But you talk about a triple-edged sword when it comes down to that. Well, Donald Trump is former political opponent bending the knee. Haley bent the knee. DeSantis bending the knee, raising $3 million for Donald Trump at a fundraiser. That's without Trump being there. You know, DeSantis raising $3 million for Trump. He had a lot of donors in, in the uh, primary. He probably would have, you know, been better off not to run and had those donors line up behind Trump instead. And you don't have a expensive primary, and it saves resources, money, everything, and probably would have led DeSantis to not, like, torpedo his career. But, you know, he's in a position where if he wants to run again, regardless, I don't think he'll be the nominee in 28, but that's beside the point. If he's raising money for Trump, good. You know, raise money for Trump. Raise all the money you can raise $3 million. Hey, look at that. $3 million Trump wouldn't have had. It just, it definitely all adds up. You know, Trump down the stretch, that's where he's going to be spending his money, but he's not going to be broke and his money's not going to legal fees the way they claim. You know, that was one super PAC out of many super PACs, and that's not even his main pack anymore. It hasn't been for like a couple years almost that these people point to, but let them believe all of Trump's money just goes to legal fees and that Trump is going to have no campaign because it just shows that they're complacent, even though the polls show the opposite. And we know polls can be flawed, but it's a little bit beside the point. The point is Trump is actually being competitive in terms of fundraising. This oil executive fundraiser, he raised $40 million last night in Texas from these oil executives at a dinner. That is huge. Some reports say it was closer to $25 million. Either way, 25 to 40 The, the fundraiser at Mar-a-Lago at the beginning of last month got 52 Even if you want to say that was revised down, maybe 40 gets revised down to 25 That's still the same amount that Biden raised with how many presidents. And now Biden's not getting the, the amount of money. Maybe they're actually revisiting, replacing him or something. I don't know why that is. I don't think they will, though. I think it's a sunk cost fallacy, and I think that they realize that it's a big gamble if you do that. But, I mean, Biden is in a big, big mess. He's down in every swing state by, you know, one or two two points in most cases. I mean, it's going to take a lot for Biden to cross the finish line. He's running against the four-time indicted candidate as, as they tried to, you know, hit him with all this stuff and try to make sure that, oh, we're going to run Trump's name through the mud even more. And it just, it didn't work. They've thrown everything at him. There's really nothing they can throw at him at this point that's going to work. If Biden's going to be able to win, it's mainly going to be on his own merits or, or raising up uh, you know, every metric of his presidency, which he just can't do at this point. The damage is done and donors know it. They're lining up behind Trump. And it's like, do I like having to rely on big money to win elections? No, but you play the game you're in and Trump can be outspent and still win. He likely will be outspent and still win. 
but being competitive or at least having some sort of operation, that money gives you enough money to build a, a turnout apparatus to win. We've got five months to go. Early voting starts in four months. The first debate's in a little bit over one month. So do keep all that in mind. We're in election season and Trump is raising a lot of money. That's huge to, to really keep it competitive. Biden's been the one spending a lot on ads and his numbers have gone down. So maybe he's going to be spending money and it's going to be hurting him when he spends because the ads are having the negative effect. I don't know. But then Trump's picking up these CEOs, endorsing him. He gets these windfalls, might be getting billions from his stock uh, for Truth Social. Elon Musk might come on board and support Donald Trump. There's not exactly going to be a cash disadvantage. Donald Trump, he, he just has this ability to you know, be backed up against the wall and come out stronger than ever. And that's what he's doing. He's polling at 47% on RCP right now, 47%. I mean, he never got 47% of the popular vote either time. And you usually do better than your final polling average shows. So, I mean, he's probably around, you know, he's going to get 48, 49% of the popular vote. Biden probably loses the popular vote at that point. And that's absolutely huge for Trump. He's on message. He's got good energy. He doesn't seem like he's old. He's only a few years younger than Biden, but there's a clear contrast there. Uh, you know, Trump is somebody who is, you know, old technically, but he comes off as youthful. You know, even if he does have, you, you want to say, oh, well, he, he mispronounced this word. It's like, he's always done that. He's always done that. He's not a politician. Biden is this politician. And he's done a very bad job. That's mainly what this election is going to be about. And you could say that Biden's job ha has been done uh, poorly in part because he is suffering through cognitive decline. But the main point is, is not Biden's old. It's Biden is just incompetent and has cognitive decline. Donald Trump, he comes off as youthful. He energizes crowds no matter where he goes. And it basically shows, I mean, it, you could say, oh, it's a photo op. He's in the Bronx. It doesn't matter what you want to call it. I mean, that's just part of campaigning. He had a good rally. He made very good points at his rally. He hit Biden where it hurts. I don't believe he wins New York. But while you're stuck in New York and you can't campaign anywhere else, why not, you know, go out there and hold events? It's it just good optics in the media and everybody in the country sees that. So, you know, that's what it comes down to. Biden didn't have any rallies in uh, 2020 at all. I mean, whenever he did, he had like five people in these weird, you know, schizophrenic social distance circles or whatever you want to call them. And, you know, it, it doesn't quite matter. You just have to win the argument. You have to get people to vote for you. And rallies can help. They absolutely can. And I think this helps him. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to a few swing states. But if you're gaining in New York City, who's to say you're not gaining in Philadelphia? Who's to say you're not gaining in Pittsburgh? Who's to say you're not gaining in some of these cities uh, in general among, you know, Hispanics or, or even, you know, in some cases, black voters? I think, I think with black voters, it's going to be more of who doesn't show up than how the people that do show up vote. But yeah, if Trump gets 15, 16 percent is... Most polls show him getting more than that. I don't know if I'm willing to, you know, jump the gun and say he could get 20. But even if he gets 13, 14 percent, that still is huge. And if turnout drops among black voters because they're disillusioned with Biden, Biden's not going to win Georgia and North Carolina. Trump is already at 251. Trump probably gets Nevada too. Then he's at what 257. Then, you know, it still gives him a boost in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. He's in a very good position to win regardless. That's the main takeaway. So Trump, he's doing rallies in the Bronx. It was a big success yesterday. His fundraising totals are going through the roof. He's uniting the party. He's getting his former primary opponents to bend the knee. And he's getting endorsements from these, you know, big donors that, may have been reluctant to back him up to this point because they realize Biden's that bad and it's all a win-win. It's all a win-win regardless of what's going on right now. So we've got five months, a little bit more than that to go. So make sure you get out and vote, register, register other people. That's the thing. Everybody's like talking about Scott Pressler and him registering voters and he does good work. I'm not saying this to kind of, you know, throw shade at him. But I'm saying that there's a lot of people who act like he's the only person that's going to do it. Oh, he's going to save Pennsylvania single-handedly. It's like 
You might register a lot of people, but if you're in Pennsylvania and you're not registering people because you think other people are going to you know, go out there and do it and you have the time and you have the money to volunteer, you're doing everybody in the country a disservice. So keep that in mind. We need all hands on deck. That's how we win this thing. That's how we get this thing won. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.